Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're gonna be talking about the new album from Blue, titled Good To Be Home. You know, the more I think about it, the more grateful I am that the Alchemist and Evans dropped the excellent album, Lord Steppington, very early on in this year. See, I'll admit right out of the gate that it's been something of a learning process for me to discover more about the hip hop underground. And considering that they brought so many names on that record to collaborate with them, I got a sampler of a whole selection of artists that I might not have ever heard of before. And considering that most of them delivered very solid lyrics and bars, it definitely got me interested in future projects by these artists. Now, the one that first jumped out at me was Styles P off his verse on No Hesitation. So I checked out his last album, Phantom and the Ghost, which was pretty solid. But he was coming from a gangster rap background, of which I was at least somewhat familiar. I'd heard this guy on the radio before. But Blue was a different act entirely. Originally debuting in the mid-2000s with the extremely solid album Below the Heavens, and inspired by both gangsta and conscious rap with a hint of a Christian angle, Blue's jagged career trajectory has at least been interesting, if a little bit concerning for his fan base, between the No York release that came right after his very brief tenure with Warner Records, and a selection of EPs and projects that really were a mixed bag across the board, I wasn't sure what I was going to be getting with his brand new double album, especially because I really didn't like his verse on his track on Lord Steppington tomorrow. Admittedly, now part of my issue with that was the beat on that track, I found it a little bit uninspired, but Blue's verse was not stellar and I wasn't all that impressed with his flow. Now that said, I wasn't about to ignore this new album, Good To Be Home, half because the collaboration list on this record looked pretty damn impressive. Not only was this a double disc with collaborations from The Alchemist and Evidence and Fashion, but LMNO was reportedly on this album as well, whose album After The Fact was one of my favorite hip hop releases of last year. And I figured, hey, with such a rich list of collaborators, it's probably gonna be pretty damn interesting, right? Well, yeah, this album is definitely interesting. It's slightly different from being great though, even though I do think this album is pretty damn close to being there. And in comparison with some of Blue's other projects, while I enjoyed this album a lot, I don't quite love it. And honestly, it's for reasons that I wasn't really expecting going into this album, especially when covering an underground rap release. Now, let me stress really strongly here that Good To Be Home by Blue is definitely still a success in what it's trying to do. But at the same time, that narrow focus might be a contributing factor to why I don't quite all out love this album, if that makes any sense. And you know what, here's the real funny thing. For a rap album with this many collaborations, I can think of only maybe two verses I don't altogether like. The lack of huge names from the mainstream gives Blue the chance to overload this album with underground spitters with vastly different flows and styles. And the extreme majority of them all brought their A game. For the most part, this is far from a bad thing, as we get great flows from Sweet Pea, Mitchie Slick, Tri-State, and Crondon, and some pretty intriguing and descriptive wordplay from Evidence, Mike Holden, and Fashion. Now, for me, the definite standouts were Definite's two verses for their directness and hard flow, I was impressed by that, LMNO's methodical and yet deftly intelligent poetry, and then Chase Infinite, Holy shit, this dude's wordplay is goddamn superb. Some research tells me that he was the rapping half of the duo Self Scientific with DJ Khalil, but seriously, that dude needs to sit down and make a solo album of his own. I listened to the hell out of that, that was awesome. Now. You've probably all noticed that I haven't really talked all that much about Blue yet. And that's not saying that his verses are bad, because you know what, they're definitely not bad. I like his rhyming. But this is the risk you run when you overload your album with great rappers. You run the risk of just getting overshadowed, which unfortunately happens here more often than it really should. Now, fortunately, Blue does step up to the microphone on his solo tracks and brings a lot of really good wordplay to the table that I did enjoy, most of which surrounds the primary theme of this album, a full-length a love letter to the late 80s, very early 90s West Coast gangster rap with which Blue grew up with. And he does a lot to capture the many distinctive flavors of that time period in hip hop, lyrically with an ease and comfort that comes together pretty damn effectively, especially on the extremely comfortable DJ Jazzy Jeff inspired song, Summertime. Now from there we get a wide platter of gangster rap, laid back bragging, frustrations with women, inevitably, and even the fascinating and yet very viscerally political moments on 
VLA, one of my favorite songs on the album. Now, one of the more interesting elements that I did really appreciate is that unlike more mainstream West Coast gangster rap, like from, say, YG, Blue actually shows the consequences of gang violence and how just his name being what it is in rap, he ends up getting dragged back into it. Now, however, the one track that surprisingly stuck with me a lot was He-Man, a track about some relationship that he had that went wrong, and yet it's painted with enough nuance and personality to show his awareness of both of their faults in that relationship and how they got into it for all of the wrong reasons and might not be the, the right place to get back together. It's one of the few moments on this album that rings as really personal for me, which is frustrating because Blue's really damn good when he goes in this direction. What's all? What's more is that for as good of a descriptive poet as he is, I don't always feel the emotional connection that he into his actual rhymes. He paints a very vivid picture, but I, does, I don't always feel he frames himself as being directly affected by what's going on in some of his songs, which, to be fair, actually makes a fair bit of sense. Blue begins the album flying home after touring, and he's trying to recapture some of those old memories, and it kind of makes sense that it feels separate from some of it now, that there is some of that distance of time there. Now, granted, that's only implied subtext, and it's never outright stated on this album, but you know what? It definitely fits in context, so I'll go with it. Now, granted, Part of that richer context comes from the instrumentation, which does plenty to define this album's sound, as it's decidedly lo-fi for hip-hop. The soul and jazz samples feel filtered through a crackle of static and grit, and given that the entire album is courtesy of producer Bombay, it lends the album a lot of atmosphere. Now, that's not saying that the beats were always to my taste. I feel the vocal samples could sometimes get a little bit shrill and grating, at least for me. I'm not sure Bombay switched up his production enough throughout the course of this album, to make all of his beats distinctive and memorable. But you know what? There were a couple moments that really did stick with me. I liked both the instrumental pieces, Back Home Again and The West Part 2, especially with that synthesizer lead there. I like the seedy groove of The West and the slick vibes of Red and Golden Summertime. And the, in the most ambitious sampling, most notably on Child Support and The LA, there were moments where Bombay got close to Mad Lib levels of sample juxtaposition. But here is where we run into the biggest and most contentious issue on this album, the production. Not the lo-fi sound, let me stress this, but the levels and the mastering because it was wildly inconsistent across this album. The bass and percussion felt painfully underweight at points, the backing vocals either felt too loud or not loud enough, and the volumes and mastering on the beats never felt of consistent quality. Now, normally in this case, I place the blame on the producer for not giving this record that sense of overall flow from track to track, but this is Blue we're talking about, and he's built an unfortunate reputation of releasing records that have mastering issues and that sound defiantly unfinished in this particular vein. And for the most part, let me stress this, I don't mind his choice to go for this particular aesthetic. Blues, clearly he's trying to imitate the choppy qualities that you'd find on the mixtapes of that particular era in the late 80s and early 90s. But at the same time, when you have producers like Madlib who are able to call back to that style and yet preserve a consistent production quality, even with those older samples that might not always be of consistent quality, these discrepancies, they do get more than a little frustrating. But you know what? Either way, the more I listen to Good To Be Home, the more I really come to like it. Do I wish that Blue had gone for a little bit more introspective direction with some of these songs? Yeah, of course I do. But with wordplay this varied and this color from this, from this many rappers, it manages to elevate the simpler subject matter to something that's pretty damn close to exceptional. All the rappers deliver very solid rhymes, and while I wasn't a big fan of Welfare or Whipped Cream, mostly because I didn't really care for the subject matter on either of those songs, I can't really deny that this record succeeds in exactly what it's trying to do. So you know what, on that note, I'm gonna round up, so to a solid 8 out of 10 and a definite recommendation. If you get a passion for lo-fi rap music with a ton of talent, or hell, just a ton of really great wordplay, put this record on. I won't quite say it's as good as Blow the Heavens, that's an album that's likely gonna hang over Blue for the rest of his career, but you know what, this album is still damn solid all the same, and definitely worth your time. So go check it out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching, if you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or if there's any other albums coming out that you'd like me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give them a lesson. So until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.